A lot of us have spent time around the table trading stories over the last day and tonight perhaps a chance to rewrite some old lessons. You may have been taught in history class that before European settlers arrived, a thick tree canopy stretched from the Atlantic Ocean to the Mississippi River. However, new analysis shows that may not be true. News Channel 5's Chris Davis and photojournalist Mike Rose introduce us to a professor who doesn't just want to teach a different story. He wants to change some of our landscape. Elk. Two of them. Oh, we got two big elks. Get getting ready to spar a little bit. For just $5 and a little gas in your car, it's well worth it to go through here and you just see elk and bison. You can take a trip centuries back in time. Now, here comes one now. <laughs> Looking for mama. In the heart of the land between the lakes, this three mile circuit is home to elk and bison. A lot of prairie grass, like I said, they've got the woods they can go into. But more than 200 years ago, a lot of Middle Tennessee might have looked and sounded. Well, they're eating, you can hear them. Much the same. I think there's an elk right there. Nowadays, the only bison around the mid-state. They love to stand in the way. Don't exactly roam. More like cast in stone. All these old buffalo trails, they led to Nashville because there was these great salt licks there. But these statues on Dickerson Pike do pay homage to why Nashville was settled in the first place. Uh, all of these, these great arteries of transportation, they were originally buffalo paths. Roaming buffalo herds are likely gone for good, but the reason why they thrived here may be making a comeback. And this was all prairie historically. At least if a biology professor has anything to do with it. The early settlers called it barrens because it was so devoid of trees. Dwayne Estes and his group, the Southeastern Grasslands Initiative. That's a pretty awesome view right there. Is the driving force behind an effort to reverse history. Tennessee had about 7.5 million acres of naturally open landscapes or grasslands at the time that uh, Europeans first came here. Today we've lost over 90% of that habitat. Estes says when settlers moved in, wide open savannas were either converted to farmland or were no longer burned, so trees grew in their place. In the process, it eradicated the natural habitats of many animals now on the brink of extinction. Species like northern bobwhite quail, grasshopper sparrow, henslow sparrow, a whole host of birds. If they didn't have this, they would have nowhere to go. They have to have this kind of habitat. This is Indian grass. So over the last few years, this beautiful tall stature, entities both public and private, got lots of asters, have agreed to let Duane transform the land. So this is big blue stem here. Two years ago, tech giant Google gave him 50 acres out at their Clarksville data center to convert a soybean field into a sprawling savanna. We planted a mixture of about 77 species out here, all of which are adapted to this place. But that's just one of the sites the group has restored. And so right here we are on the edge, sort of in the heart of Clarksville. Over at Dunbar Cave State Park. Already this has transformed a ton from what uh, it looked like five years ago. The former hayfield turned prairie is starting to reach maturity. This will not stay a treeless landscape. What we want to do is then come in and actually plant about one to two trees per acre. Which Professor Estes believes is returning the land to its original form. Okay, let's go in here. So in historic times, this wall of forest that we just had to like basically break our way into, that's wholly unnatural. It would have been very feathered and sort of graded into one another. This tree could easily be 250 years old. The structure of this tree and what type of tree it is tells us that when this tree started growing, it had to have light, it had to have space. So it achieved this open structure because none of this was around it. All that you see here has come up around it really in probably the past 100 years. But now what we have is a perfect condition for lots of invasive species like bush honeysuckle, which has totally covered all of like Warner Park, for example. We need to get rid of that. But occasionally this restoration effort has been met with skepticism and criticism. I want to thank everybody for being here. Yes, a lot of people are very interested in what's going on. Back in October. Listen, we're going to try to do this in an orderly way. TWRA held a public meeting about doing a similar project at the Bridgestone Wildlife Management Area in White County. We need these endangered ecosystems back because they're part of our heritage. But in order to do so, TWRA would have to cut down 
200 acres of hardwood forests. Why not leave the hardwoods alone? Most of the crowd was incensed. Whenever you clear cut, it's ugly. It also pitted hunters against hunters. We've talked about quail. Let's get back to the redneck. I coon hunt and squirrel hunt. Where's that lane going? You can't find a darn quail unless you go to a preserve and you pay $400 a day. Now, guys, I thought we were into fish and game and, and, and uh, other things, not bird watching. Thank you. For our friends that love forests, and we love forests just as much as any, the idea of creating a, a grassland with trees, a savanna, is number one, they should only go where they belong. The TWRA pointed to the Catoosa Wildlife Management Area, actually near the Bridgestone land, as a success story. Not only has the grassland restoration effort restored the land to perhaps its original state, the endangered species have started to return. It went from 30 species of wildflowers on the ground to more than 330 on the ground. Which is why Dwayne wants to do the same at the Bridgestone land. And I'll fight you over forest. I love a healthy wetland and I love clean water. It is time, well past time, that grasslands have an equal seat at the conservation table. So that one day, a glimpse back in time. The Native Americans knew how to care for the prairie. Might be found a little closer to home. It's not just about biodiversity, it's about American history. With photojournalist Mike Rose, Chris Davis, News Channel 5. Thank you to Chris and Mike. By the way, Professor Estes is also partnering with Metro Parks to designate a portion of the new Ravenwood Park and Hermitage for grassland restoration. The park may even include a bison range and clover fields.